title of my sermon tonight is Satan Claus is Coming to Town. <laughs> I'm not going not to re-preach Brother Anthony's sermon from last month. He had a, um, a good sermon that was called Three Ways Satan Infiltrates Christmas, and I, I learned a lot from it. I thought it was very good. I want to specifically touch on the big man in red himself tonight. Uh, Satan Claus and or Santa Claus, whatever you call him, and um, basically we all know that Satan is the master counterfeiter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> that old serpent, he's never had an original thought run through his head. All he can do is look at God's creation and just distort it and yeah, pervert yeah. it every way that he can. So obviously we're going to look at some ways that Satan distorts uh, uh, Christmas and uses Sa uh, Santa Claus as his uh, puppeteer. So I'm not sure if there's anybody else that, that is going through this or feels this way, but our families are pretty upset with us for not raising our children the same way we were raised up to, to practice the, the doctrine of Santa Claus this time of year. And, uh, you know, sometimes we, we have to catch our children, you know, because they're being pulled to the side and told certain things, and we have to say, now, now. So, but I think our kids are doing fairly well for the most part they're they're reproving you know certain people in our lives that are <laughs> telling them about Santa Claus um, but you know and, and I understand where it comes from uh, they think we're robbing our children of their childhood uh, the magical of the magic of Christmas and all these things and uh, I know where it's coming from and but at the end of the day I just you know I'm sure most of everybody in this room agrees uh, I just refuse to lie to my children about Santa Claus and, right. and um, everything that it is brought on by Santa Claus or Satan Claus. So, uh, you're in Psalm 33. <clears throat> First point I want to look at is um, Satan Claus is apparently omniscient, just like God. Just like the Lord God, he knows everything, you know. He knows when you're sleeping and when you're awake and all that stuff. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says only God can know these things. 1 John chapter 3, verse 20 says, For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. In Psalm 33, where you're at in verse 13, the Bible reads, The Lord looketh from heaven, he beholdeth all the sons of men. From the place of his habitation, he looketh upon all the inhabitants of the earth, he fashioneth their hearts alike, he considereth all their works. You know, and, and Satan, being the, the master counterfeiter, he, he takes uh, Santa Claus and he turns him into the, the same godlike qualities that we see in God himself. The famous uh, Christmas song, Santa Claus is Coming to Town, reads, You better watch out. You better not cry. Better not pout. I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. He's making a list and checking it twice. Going to find out who's naughty or nice. Santa Claus is coming to town. He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good. So be good for goodness sake. And it goes on to say you better watch out, you better not cry, blah, blah, blah. So Santa Claus has these same qualities, these same powers that our Lord and Je our Savior does, and that's just not true. All right. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 13, don't turn there. It says, Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. But all things are naked and opened unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. God sees everything before him, not Santa, all right? And the second point I want to talk about is Santa Claus requires that you believe in him in order to receive his gifts, okay? Um, who's familiar with the old movie, The Polar Express? Seen it? Yeah, don't tell on yourself. But uh, <laughs> I've seen it, all right? I've seen it. And it's a story. I just kind of went out and printed off the narrative. It says, the Polar Express, on Christmas Eve, a boy who is beginning to question Santa's existence witnesses a train known as the Polar Express that is about to depart for the North Pole. When the boy examines the train, the conductor allows him to board, and they have a fascinating adventure to meet Santa Claus. Over the course of the trip, the boy rededicates his belief in Santa 
They return home, and the next morning, it's Christmas. Santa has left a present for the boy, which is a special bell. The parents hear no sound from the bell, but the narrator tells that he can still hear it, as the, only the bell rings for those who truly believe. If you truly believe in Santa, you can hear this bell when it rings and stuff. That's what the whole movie's about. And in order to receive Santa's gifts, you do have to believe in Santa Claus, according to tradition. You know, but in Romans chapter 1, come on in. In Romans chapter 1, verse 16, and verse 16, it says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Once again, this is Satan trying to take away God's qualities. In order to receive God's gift of free salvation, you have to believe in Jesus Christ. Okay, And um, I remember it was uh, just a few short years ago that my wife and I, you know, we were still bought into raising our children to, you know, believe in Santa. And luckily they were still way too young to even take concern of the matter. But what would we do? We'd take them down to the, to the mall and go find Santa Claus in the mall. And we'd, we'd set the kids in the lap of Santa, you know, and as soon as we would pick them up and place them in the pedophile's lap, they would just start screaming and yelling and, they, you know, tears are flowing and the kids are just having a hard time dealing with it. They don't know what's going on. And what would we do? Well, we'd try to, you know, well, now calm down, calm down. It's okay, it's okay. And we'd try to, you know, get them to relax so we could get a normal picture made. But I guess we should have been trusting our kids' early intuition at that age, you know. They already knew something's wrong with uh, Santa, and uh, we just were trying to force it upon them. I think that's probably how it all starts out. The kids know, the kids know better, but the parents are very persistent. So, uh, uh, my last point tonight is not only does uh, Satan Claus teach a works-based salvation, Right. by instructing children to live a life abstaining from wrongdoing in order to receive his presence. But you'll get all kind of screwed up doctrine in other areas from Santa Claus. And, and I got one last song here. Here comes Santa Claus. All right. So we had Santa Claus is coming to town. Here comes Santa Claus. Listen to these lyrics. This is where I got the idea to preach the sermon tonight. It was actually last weekend. We were up in Tennessee and we were looking at all the Christmas lights and they had the the music blaring through everything. And it says uh, in the song, Here Comes Santa Claus, it says, Here comes Santa Claus, here comes Santa Claus, right down Santa Claus Lane. He doesn't care if you're rich or poor, he loves you just the same. All right, check it out. Santa knows we're all God's children. That makes everything right. So fill your hearts with Christmas cheer because Santa Claus comes tonight. So, are we all God's children? No. Of course not. We're not all God's children, unless you're Mormon and you think that. But um, the only way you're going to become a child of God is to believe in Jesus Christ. Yeah. All right. John 1.12 says, But as many as received him, to them gave you power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe in his name. And if you don't believe in the name of Jesus Christ, you're not a child of God. So that's screwed up doctrine right there. <clears throat> the song continues on. It says, here comes Santa Claus, here comes Santa Claus, right down Santa Claus Lane. He'll come around when the uh, when the chimes ring out that it's Christmas morn again. Peace on earth will come to all if we just follow the light. So let's give thanks to the Lord above that Santa Claus comes tonight. All right, so check that out. I'll, I'll give the song a benefit of doubt. If we all follow the light, are we going to have peace on earth? No. The only time we're going to have peace on this earth is when Jesus comes down and we have his millennial reign right here. Right. Then we'll have the lamb laying down with the lion and all those things, and it'll be great. But until then, we're not going to have peace on earth, okay? And it's impossible for everybody to follow the light. And we're not going to give thanks to the Lord above that Santa Claus comes tonight. It's not going to happen. God says, thou shalt have no other gods before me, all right? Yep. And uh, I'm out of town, but I appreciate you listening. If you take a stand and you're not going to teach your children to follow the ways of Santa Claus, I support you and uh, be encouraged. Yeah. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this, uh, this night. Lord, we ask that you bless all the preachers and uh, the ones following you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.